Niccolo di Bernardo dei Machiavelli, Italian, Nico L. Machiavelli, the 3rd of May 1469 to the 21st of June 1527, was an Italian diplomat, politician, historian, philosopher, humanist, writer, playwright and poet of the Renaissance period. He has often been called the father of modern political science. For many years he was a senior official in the Florentine Republic, with responsibilities in diplomatic and military affairs. He also wrote comedies, carnival songs, and poetry. His personal correspondence is renowned by Italian scholars. He was secretary to the Second Chancery of the Republic of Florence from 1498 to 1512, when the Medici were out of power. He wrote his most well-known work The Prince Il Principe in 1513, having been exiled from city affairs. Machiavellianism is widely used as a negative term to characterize unscrupulous politicians of the sort Machiavelli described most famously in The Prince. Machiavelli described immoral behavior, such as dishonesty and the killing of innocents, as being normal and effective in politics. He even seemed to encourage it in some situations. The book gained notoriety due to claims that it teaches evil recommendations to tyrants to help them maintain their power. The term Machiavellian is often associated with political deceit, deviousness, and realpolitik. On the other hand, many commentators, such as Baruch Spinoza, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Denis Diderot, have argued that Machiavelli was actually a republican, even when writing The Prince, and his writings were an inspiration to Enlightenment proponents of modern democratic political philosophy. In one place, for example, he noted his admiration for the selfless Roman dictator Cincinnatus. Life Machiavelli was born in Florence, Italy, the third child and first son of attorney Bernardo di Niccolo Machiavelli and his wife, Bartolomea di Stefano Nelli. The Machiavelli family is believed to be descended from the old Marquises of Tuscany and to have produced thirteen Florentine gonfaloniers of justice, one of the offices of a group of nine citizens selected by drawing lots every two months and who formed the government, or signoria, but he was never a full citizen of Florence because of the nature of Florentine citizenship in that time even under the Republican regime. Machiavelli married Marietta Cursini in 1502. Machiavelli was born in a tumultuous era in which popes waged acquisitive wars against Italian city-states, and people and cities often fell from power as France, Spain, and the Holy Roman Empire battled for regional influence and control. Political military alliances continually changed, featuring condottieri mercenary leaders, who changed sides without warning, and the rise and fall of many short-lived governments. Machiavelli was taught grammar, rhetoric, and Latin. It is thought that he did not learn Greek even though Florence was at the time one of the centers of Greek scholarship in Europe. In 1494 Florence restored the Republic, expelling the Medici family that had ruled Florence for some 60 years. Shortly after the execution of Savonarola, Machiavelli was appointed to an office of the Second Chancery, a medieval writing office that put Machiavelli in charge of the production of official Florentine government documents. Shortly thereafter, he was also made the secretary of the Dici di Liberta e Pace. In the first decade of the 16th century, he carried out several diplomatic missions, most notably to the papacy in Rome. Moreover, from 1502 to 1503, he witnessed the brutal reality of the state-building methods of Cesare Borgia (1475–1507) and his father, Pope Alexander VI, who were then engaged in the process of trying to bring a large part of central Italy under their possession. The pretext of defending church interests was used as a partial justification by the Borgias. Other excursions to the court of Louis XII and the Spanish court influenced his writings, such as *The Prince*. Between 1503 and 1506, Machiavelli was responsible for the Florentine militia. He distrusted mercenaries a distrust that he explained in his official reports and then later in his theoretical works for their unpatriotic and uninvested nature in the war that makes their allegiance fickle and often too unreliable when most needed and instead staffed his army with citizens, a policy that was to be repeatedly successful. Under his command, Florentine citizen soldiers defeated Pisa in 1509. However, Machiavelli's success did not last. In August 1512 the Medici, backed by Pope Julius II, used Spanish troops to defeat the Florentines at Prato, but many historians have argued that it was due to Piero Soderini's unwillingness to compromise with the Medici, who were holding Prato under siege. 
In the wake of the siege, Soderini resigned as Florentine head of state and left in exile. The experience would, like Machiavelli's time in foreign courts and with the Borgia, heavily influence his political writings. After the Medici victory, the Florentine city-state and the Republic were dissolved, and Machiavelli was deprived of office in 1512. In 1513 the Medici accused him of conspiracy against them and had him imprisoned. Despite having been subjected to torture, with the rope, in which the prisoner is hanged from his bound wrists, from the back, forcing the arms to bear the body's weight and dislocating the shoulders, he denied involvement and was released after three weeks. Machiavelli then retired to his estate at Sant'Andrea in Percussiona, near San Costiano in Val di Pesa, and devoted himself to studying and writing of the political treatises that earned his place in the intellectual development of political philosophy and political conduct, despairing of the opportunity to remain directly involved in political matters. After a time, he began to participate in intellectual groups in Florence and wrote several plays that, unlike his works on political theory, were both popular and widely known in his lifetime. Still, politics remained his main passion and, to satisfy this interest, he maintained a well-known correspondence with more politically connected friends, attempting to become involved once again in political life. In a letter to Francesco Vittori, he described his exile. When evening comes, I go back home, and go to my study. On the threshold, I take off my work clothes, covered in mud and filth, and I put on the clothes an ambassador would wear. Decently dressed, I enter the ancient courts of rulers who have long since died. There, I am warmly welcomed, and I feed on the only food I find nourishing and was born to savor. I am not ashamed to talk to them and ask them to explain their actions and they, out of kindness, answer me. Four hours go by without my feeling any anxiety. I forget every worry. I am no longer afraid of poverty or frightened of death. I live entirely through them. Machiavelli died in 1527 at 58 after receiving his last rites. He was buried at the Church of Santa Croce in Florence. An epitaph honoring him is inscribed on his monument. The Latin legend reads, Tanto nemini nullum par elogium, so great a name has no adequate praise, or no eulogy would be a match for such a great name. <laughs> Originality Commentators have taken very different approaches to Machiavelli and not always agreed. Major discussion has tended to be about two issues, first, how unified and philosophical his work is, and second, concerning how innovative or traditional it is. Topic. Coherence There is some disagreement concerning how best to describe the unifying themes, if there are any, that can be found in Machiavelli's works, especially in the two major political works, The Prince and Discourses. Some commentators have described him as inconsistent, and perhaps as not even putting a high priority in consistency. Others such as Hans Behren have argued that his ideas must have changed dramatically over time. Some have argued that his conclusions are best understood as a product of his times, experiences and education. Others, such as Leo Strauss and Harvey Mansfield, have argued strongly that there is a very strong and deliberate consistency and distinctness, even arguing that this extends to all of Machiavelli's works including his comedies and letters. Topic. Influences Commentators such as Leo Strauss have gone so far as to name Machiavelli as the deliberate originator of modernity itself. Others have argued that Machiavelli is only a particularly interesting example of trends which were happening around him. In any case Machiavelli presented himself at various times as someone reminding Italians of the old virtues of the Romans and Greeks, and other times as someone promoting a completely new approach to politics, that Machiavelli had a wide range of influences is in itself not controversial. Their relative importance is however a subject of ongoing discussion. It is possible to summarize some of the main influences emphasized by different commentators. 1. The Mirror of Prince's Genre. Gilbert 1938 summarized the similarities between the prince and the genre it obviously imitates, the so-called Mirror of Prince's style. This was a classically influenced genre, with models at least as far back as Xenophon and Isocrates. While Gilbert emphasized the similarities, however, he agreed with all other commentators that Machiavelli was particularly novel in the way he used this genre, even when compared to his contemporaries such as Baldessare Castiglione and Erasmus. 
One of the major innovations Gilbert noted was that Machiavelli focused upon the deliberate purpose of dealing with a new ruler who will need to establish himself in defiance of custom. Normally, these types of works were addressed only to hereditary princes. Xenophon is also an exception in this regard. 2. Classical republicanism. Commentators such as Quentin Skinner and J. G. A. Pocock, in the so-called Cambridge School of Interpretation, have been able to show that some of the republican themes in Machiavelli's political works, particularly the discourses on Livy, can be found in medieval Italian literature which was influenced by classical authors such as Sallust. 3. Classical political philosophy, Xenophon, Plato and Aristotle. The Socratic school of classical political philosophy, especially Aristotle, had become a major influence upon European political thinking in the late Middle Ages. It existed both in the Catholicized form presented by Thomas Aquinas, and in the more controversial, Averroist, form of authors like Marsilius of Padua. Machiavelli was critical of Catholic political thinking and may have been influenced by Averroism. But he cites Plato and Aristotle very infrequently and apparently did not approve of them. Leo Strauss argued that the strong influence of Xenophon, a student of Socrates more known as an historian, rhetorician and soldier, was a major source of Socratic ideas for Machiavelli, sometimes not in line with Aristotle. While interest in Plato was increasing in Florence during Machiavelli's lifetime, Machiavelli does not show particular interest in him, but was indirectly influenced by his readings of authors such as Polybius, Plutarch and Cicero. The major difference between Machiavelli and the Socratics, according to Strauss, is Machiavelli's materialism, and therefore his rejection of both a teleological view of nature and of the view that philosophy is higher than politics. With their teleological understanding of things, Socratics argued that desirable things tend to happen by nature, as if nature desired them, but Machiavelli claimed that such things happen by blind chance or human action. Point four. Classical materialism. Strauss argued that Machiavelli may have seen himself as influenced by some ideas from classical materialists such as Democritus, Epicurus and Lucretius. Strauss however sees this also as a sign of major innovation in Machiavelli, because classical materialists did not share the Socratic regard for political life, while Machiavelli clearly did. Point five. Thucydides some scholars note the similarity between Machiavelli and the Greek historian Thucydides, since both emphasized power politics. Strauss argued that Machiavelli may indeed have been influenced by pre-Socratic philosophers, but he felt it was a new combination. Contemporary readers are reminded by Machiavelli's teaching of Thucydides, they find in both authors the same realism i.e., the same denial of the power of the gods or of justice and the same sensitivity to harsh necessity and elusive chance. Yet Thucydides never calls in question the intrinsic superiority of nobility to baseness, a superiority that shines forth particularly when the noble is destroyed by the base. Therefore Thucydides' history arouses in the reader a sadness which is never aroused by Machiavelli's books. In Machiavelli we find comedies, parodies, and satires but nothing reminding of tragedy. One half of humanity remains outside of his thought. There is no tragedy in Machiavelli because he has no sense of the sacredness of the common. Strauss 1958, p. 292 <laughs> Beliefs Amongst commentators, there are a few consistently made proposals concerning what was most new in Machiavelli's work. Topic. Empiricism and realism versus idealism Machiavelli is sometimes seen as the prototype of a modern empirical scientist, building generalizations from experience and historical facts, and emphasizing the uselessness of theorizing with the imagination. He emancipated politics from theology and moral philosophy. He undertook to describe simply what rulers actually did and thus anticipated what was later called the scientific spirit in which questions of good and bad are ignored, and the observer attempts to discover only what really happens. Machiavelli felt that his early schooling along the lines of a traditional classical education was essentially useless for the purpose of understanding politics. Nevertheless, he advocated intensive study of the past, particularly regarding the founding of a city, which he felt was a key to understanding its later development. Moreover, he studied the way people lived and aimed to inform leaders how they should rule and even how they themselves should live. 
For example, Machiavelli denies that living virtuously necessarily leads to happiness. And Machiavelli viewed misery as one of the vices that enables a prince to rule. Machiavelli stated that it would be best to be both loved and feared. But since the two rarely come together, anyone compelled to choose will find greater security in being feared than in being loved. In much of Machiavelli's work, it seems that the ruler must adopt unsavory policies for the sake of the continuance of his regime. A related and more controversial proposal often made is that he described how to do things in politics in a way which seemed neutral concerning who used the advice tyrants or good rulers. That Machiavelli strove for realism is not doubted, but for four centuries scholars have debated how best to describe his morality. The prince made the word Machiavellian a byword for deceit, despotism, and political manipulation. Even if Machiavelli was not himself evil, Leo Strauss declared himself inclined toward the traditional view that Machiavelli was self-consciously a teacher of evil, since he counsels the princes to avoid the values of justice, mercy, temperance, wisdom, and love of their people in preference to the use of cruelty, violence, fear, and deception. Italian antifascist philosopher Benedetto Croce 1925 concludes Machiavelli is simply a realist or pragmatist who accurately states that moral values in reality do not greatly affect the decisions that political leaders make. German philosopher Ernst Cassirer held that Machiavelli simply adopts the stance of a political scientist—a Galileo of politics—in distinguishing between the facts of political life and the values of moral judgment. On the other hand, Walter Russell Mead has argued that the prince's advice presupposes the importance of ideas like legitimacy in making changes to the political system. Topic. Fortune Machiavelli is generally seen as being critical of Christianity as it existed in his time, specifically its effect upon politics, and also everyday life. In his opinion, Christianity, along with the teleological Aristotelianism that the Church had come to accept, allowed practical decisions to be guided too much by imaginary ideals and encouraged people to lazily leave events up to providence or, as he would put it, chance, luck or fortune. While Christianity sees modesty as a virtue and pride as sinful, Machiavelli took a more classical position, seeing ambition, spiritedness, and the pursuit of glory as good and natural things, and part of the virtue and prudence that good princes should have. Therefore, while it was traditional to say that leaders should have virtues, especially prudence, Machiavelli's use of the words virtue and prudenza was unusual for his time, implying a spirited and a modest ambition. Famously, Machiavelli argued that virtue and prudence can help a man control more of his future, in the place of allowing fortune to do so. Nahami has argued that this same approach can be found in Machiavelli's approach to love and desire, as seen in his comedies and correspondence. Nahami shows how Machiavelli's friend Vittori argued against Machiavelli and cited a more traditional understanding of fortune. On the other hand, humanism in Machiavelli's time meant that classical pre-Christian ideas about virtue and prudence, including the possibility of trying to control one's future, were not unique to him. But humanists did not go so far as to promote the extra glory of deliberately aiming to establish a new state, in defiance of traditions and laws. While Machiavelli's approach had classical precedents, it has been argued that it did more than just bring back old ideas and that Machiavelli was not a typical humanist. Strauss 1958 argues that the way Machiavelli combines classical ideas is new. While Xenophon and Plato also described realistic politics and were closer to Machiavelli than Aristotle was, they, like Aristotle, also saw philosophy as something higher than politics. Machiavelli was apparently a materialist who objected to explanations involving formal and final causation, or teleology. Machiavelli's promotion of ambition among leaders while denying any higher standard meant that he encouraged risk-taking, and innovation, most famously the founding of new modes and orders. His advice to princes was therefore certainly not limited to discussing how to maintain a state. It has been argued that Machiavelli's promotion of innovation led directly to the argument for progress as an aim of politics and civilization. But while a belief that humanity can control its own future, control nature, and progress has been long-lasting, Machiavelli's followers, starting with his own friend Guicciardini, have tended to prefer peaceful progress through economic development, and not warlike progress. 
As Harvey Mansfield 1995, p. 74, wrote, "...in attempting other, more regular and scientific modes of overcoming fortune, Machiavelli's successors formalized and emasculated his notion of virtue." Machiavelli however, along with some of his classical predecessors, saw ambition and spiritedness, and therefore war, as inevitable and part of human nature. Strauss concludes his 1958 thoughts on Machiavelli by proposing that this promotion of progress leads directly to the modern arms race. Strauss argued that the unavoidable nature of such arms races, which have existed before modern times and led to the collapse of peaceful civilizations, provides us with both an explanation of what is most truly dangerous in Machiavelli's innovations, but also the way in which the aims of his apparently immoral innovation can be understood. Topic. Religion Machiavelli explains repeatedly that he saw religion as man-made, and that the value of religion lies in its contribution to social order and the rules of morality must be dispensed with if security requires it. In The Prince, The Discourses, and in The Life of Castruccio Castracani, he describes prophets, as he calls them, like Moses, Romulus, Cyrus the Great, and Theseus he treated pagan and Christian patriarchs in the same way as the greatest of new princes, the glorious and brutal founders of the most novel innovations in politics, and men whom Machiavelli assures us have always used a large amount of armed force and murder against their own people. He estimated that these sects last from 1,666 to 3,000 years each time, which, as pointed out by Leo Strauss, would mean that Christianity became due to start finishing about 150 years after Machiavelli. Machiavelli's concern with Christianity as a sect was that it makes men weak and inactive, delivering politics into the hands of cruel and wicked men without a fight. While fear of God can be replaced by fear of the prince, if there is a strong enough prince, Machiavelli felt that having a religion is in any case especially essential to keeping a republic in order. For Machiavelli, a truly great prince can never be conventionally religious himself, but he should make his people religious if he can. According to Strauss 1958, pp. 226-27 he was not the first person to ever explain religion in this way, but his description of religion was novel because of the way he integrated this into his general account of princes. Machiavelli's judgment that democracies need religion for practical political reasons was widespread among modern proponents of republics until approximately the time of the French Revolution. This therefore represents a point of disagreement between himself and late modernity. Topic. Positive side to factional and individual vice Despite the classical precedents, which Machiavelli was not the only one to promote in his time, Machiavelli's realism and willingness to argue that good ends justify bad things, is seen as a critical stimulus towards some of the most important theories of modern politics. Firstly, particularly in the discourses on Livy, Machiavelli is unusual in the positive side he sometimes seems to describe in factionalism in republics. For example, quite early in the discourses, in Book 1, Chapter 4, a chapter title announces that the disunion of the plebs and senate in Rome, kept Rome free, that a community has different components whose interests must be balanced in any good regime is an idea with classical precedence, but Machiavelli's particularly extreme presentation is seen as a critical step towards the later political ideas of both a division of powers or checks and balances, ideas which lay behind the U.S. Constitution, as well as many other modern state constitutions. Similarly, the modern economic argument for capitalism, and most modern forms of economics, was often stated in the form of public virtue from private vices. Also in this case, even though there are classical precedents, Machiavelli's insistence on being both realistic and ambitious, not only admitting that vice exists but being willing to risk encouraging it, is a critical step on the path to this insight. Mansfield however argues that Machiavelli's own aims have not been shared by those he influenced. Machiavelli argued against seeing mere peace and economic growth as worthy aims on their own, if they would lead to what Mansfield calls the Taming of the Prince Topic. Machiavellian Machiavelli is most famous for a short political treatise, The Prince, written in 1513 but not published until 1532, five years after his death. 
Although he privately circulated the prints among friends, the only theoretical work to be printed in his lifetime was The Art of War, which was about military science. Since the 16th century, generations of politicians remain attracted and repelled by its apparently neutral acceptance, or even positive encouragement, of the immorality of powerful men, described especially in The Prince but also in his other works. His works are sometimes even said to have contributed to the modern negative connotations of the words politics and politician, and it is sometimes thought that it is because of him that Old Nick became an English term for the devil. More obviously, the adjective Machiavellian became a term describing someone or something that is "...marked by cunning, duplicity, or bad faith." Machiavellianism also remains a popular term used in speeches and journalism, while in psychology, it denotes a personality type. While Machiavellianism is notable in the works of Machiavelli, Machiavelli's works are complex and he is generally agreed to have been more than just Machiavellian himself. For example, J.G.A. Pocock 1975 saw him as a major source of the republicanism that spread throughout England and North America in the 17th and 18th centuries and Leo Strauss 1958, whose view of Machiavelli is quite different in many ways, agreed about Machiavelli's influence on republicanism and argued that even though Machiavelli was a teacher of evil he had a nobility of spirit that led him to advocate ignoble actions. Whatever his intentions, which are still debated today, he has become associated with any proposal where the end justifies the means. For example, Leo Strauss 1958, p. 297, wrote, Machiavelli is the only political thinker whose name has come into common use for designating a kind of politics, which exists and will continue to exist independently of his influence, a politics guided exclusively by considerations of expediency, which uses all means, fair or foul, iron or poison, for achieving its ends, its end being the aggrandizement of one's country or fatherland, but also using the fatherland in the service of the self-aggrandizement of the politician or statesman or one's party. Topic. Influence To quote Robert Beerley, There were in circulation approximately 15 editions of the prints and 19 of the discourses and French translations of each before they were placed on the index of Paul IV in 1559, a measure which nearly stopped publication in Catholic areas except in France. Three principal writers took the field against Machiavelli between the publication of his works and their condemnation in 1559 and again by the Tridentine Index in 1564. These were the English Cardinal Reginald Pole and the Portuguese Bishop Geronimo Osorio, both of whom lived for many years in Italy, and the Italian humanist and later bishop, Ambrogio Caterino Politi. Machiavelli's ideas had a profound impact on political leaders throughout the modern West, helped by the new technology of the printing press. During the first generations after Machiavelli, his main influence was in non-Republican governments. Pohl reported that the prince was spoken of highly by Thomas Cromwell in England and had influenced Henry VIII in his turn towards Protestantism, and in his tactics, for example during the Pilgrimage of Grace. A copy was also possessed by the Catholic king and emperor Charles V in France. After an initially mixed reaction, Machiavelli came to be associated with Catherine de' Medici and the Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre. As Beerley 1990-17 reports, in the 16th century, Catholic writers associated Machiavelli with the Protestants, whereas Protestant authors saw him as Italian and Catholic. In fact, he was apparently influencing both Catholic and Protestant kings. One of the most important early works dedicated to criticism of Machiavelli, especially the prince, was that of the Huguenot, Innocent Gentile, whose work commonly referred to as Discourse Against Machiavelli or Anti-Machiavel was published in Geneva in 1576. He accused Machiavelli of being an atheist and accused politicians of his time by saying that his works were the Quran of the courtiers, that he is of no reputation in the court of France which hath not Machiavel's writings at the finger's ends." Another theme of Gentile was more in the spirit of Machiavelli himself, he questioned the effectiveness of immoral strategies just as Machiavelli had himself done, despite also explaining how they could sometimes work. This became the theme of much future political discourse in Europe during the 17th century. This includes the Catholic Counter-Reformation writers summarized by Beerley, Giovanni Botero, Justus Lipsius, Carlo Scribani, Adam Kantzen, Pedro de Ribadonera, and Diego Saavedra Fajardo. 
These authors criticized Machiavelli, but also followed him in many ways. They accepted the need for a prince to be concerned with reputation, and even a need for cunning and deceit, but compared to Machiavelli, and like later modernist writers, they emphasized economic progress much more than the riskier ventures of war. These authors tended to cite Tacitus as their source for realist political advice, rather than Machiavelli, and this pretense came to be known as Tacitism. Black Tacitism was in support of princely rule, but Red Tacitism Arguing the case for republics, more in the original spirit of Machiavelli himself, became increasingly important. Modern materialist philosophy developed in the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries, starting in the generations after Machiavelli. This philosophy tended to be republican, more in the original spirit of Machiavellian, but as with the Catholic authors Machiavelli's realism and encouragement of using innovation to try to control one's own fortune were more accepted than his emphasis upon war and politics. Not only was innovative economics and politics a result, but also modern science, leading some commentators to say that the 18th century Enlightenment involved a humanitarian moderating of Machiavellianism. The importance of Machiavelli's influence is notable in many important figures in this endeavor, for example, Bowdoin, Francis Bacon, Algernon Sidney, Harrington, John Milton, Spinoza, Rousseau, Hume, Edward Gibbon, and Adam Smith. Although he was not always mentioned by name as an inspiration, due to his controversy, he is also thought to have been an influence for other major philosophers, such as Montaigne, Descartes, Hobbes, Locke and Montesquieu. Although Jean-Jacques Rousseau is associated with very different political ideas, it is important to view Machiavelli's work from different points of view rather than just the traditional notion. For example, Rousseau viewed Machiavelli's work as a satirical piece in which Machiavelli exposes the faults of a one-man rule rather than exalting amorality. In the 17th century it was in England that Machiavelli's ideas were most substantially developed and adapted, and that republicanism came once more to life, and out of 17th century English republicanism there were to emerge in the next century not only a theme of English political and historical reflection, of the writings of the Bolingbroke Circle and of Gibbon and of early parliamentary radicals, but a stimulus to the Enlightenment in Scotland, on the continent, and in America. Scholars have argued that Machiavelli was a major indirect and direct influence upon the political thinking of the founding fathers of the United States due to his overwhelming favoritism of republicanism and the republic type of government. According to John McCormick, it is still very much debatable whether or not Machiavelli was an advisor of tyranny or partisan of liberty." Benjamin Franklin, James Madison and Thomas Jefferson followed Machiavelli's republicanism when they opposed what they saw as the emerging aristocracy that they feared Alexander Hamilton was creating with the Federalist Party. Hamilton learned from Machiavelli about the importance of foreign policy for domestic policy, but may have broken from him regarding how rapacious a republic needed to be in order to survive. George Washington was less influenced by Machiavelli, the founding father who perhaps most studied and valued Machiavelli as a political philosopher was John Adams, who profusely commented on the Italians' thought in his work, A Defense of the Constitutions of Government of the United States of America. In this work, John Adams praised Machiavelli, with Algernon Sidney and Montesquieu, as a philosophic defender of mixed government. For Adams, Machiavelli restored empirical reason to politics, while his analysis of factions was commendable. Adams likewise agreed with the Florentine that human nature was immutable and driven by passions. He also accepted Machiavelli's belief that all societies were subject to cyclical periods of growth and decay. For Adams, Machiavelli lacked only a clear understanding of the institutions necessary for good government. 20th century The 20th century Italian communist Antonio Gramsci drew great inspiration from Machiavelli's writings on ethics, morals, and how they relate to the state and revolution in his writings on passive revolution, and how a society can be manipulated by controlling popular notions of morality. Joseph Stalin read The Prince and annotated his own copy. Topic: <laughs> Revival of interest in the comedies. 
In the 20th century there was also renewed interest in Machiavelli's La Mandragola 1518, which received numerous stagings, including several in New York, at the New York Shakespeare Festival in 1976 and the Riverside Shakespeare Company in 1979, as a musical comedy by Pierre Rabin in Munich's Antideter in 1971, and at London's National Theatre in 1984. Works. <laughs> The Prince Machiavelli's best-known book Il Principe contains several maxims concerning politics. Instead of the more traditional target audience of a hereditary prince, it concentrates on the possibility of a new prince. To retain power, the hereditary prince must carefully balance the interests of a variety of institutions to which the people are accustomed. By contrast, a new prince has the more difficult task in ruling, he must first stabilize his newfound power in order to build an enduring political structure. Machiavelli suggests that the social benefits of stability and security can be achieved in the face of moral corruption. Machiavelli believed that public and private morality had to be understood as two different things in order to rule well. As a result, a ruler must be concerned not only with reputation, but also must be positively willing to act immorally at the right times. Machiavelli believed as a ruler, it was better to be widely feared than to be greatly loved. A loved ruler retains authority by obligation while a feared leader rules by fear of punishment. As a political theorist, Machiavelli emphasized the occasional need for the methodical exercise of brute force or deceit including extermination of entire noble families to head off any chance of a challenge to the prince's authority. Scholars often note that Machiavelli glorifies instrumentality in state building, an approach embodied by the saying, the ends justify the means. This quote has been disputed and may not come from Niccolò Machiavelli or his writings. Violence may be necessary for the successful stabilization of power and introduction of new legal institutions. Force may be used to eliminate political rivals, to coerce resistant populations, and to purge the community of other men strong enough of a character to rule, who will inevitably attempt to replace the ruler. Machiavelli has become infamous for such political advice, ensuring that he would be remembered in history through the adjective, Machiavellian. Notwithstanding some mitigating themes, the Catholic Church banned the prince, putting it on the Index Librorum Prohibitorum. Humanists also viewed the book negatively, including Erasmus of Rotterdam. As a treatise, its primary intellectual contribution to the history of political thought is the fundamental break between political realism and political idealism, due to it being a manual on acquiring and keeping political power. In contrast with Plato and Aristotle, Machiavelli insisted that an imaginary ideal society is not a model by which a prince should orient himself. Concerning the differences and similarities in Machiavelli's advice to ruthless and tyrannical princes in The Prince and his more republican exhortations in Discourses on Livy, many have concluded that The Prince, although written as advice for a monarchical prince, contains arguments for the superiority of republican regimes, similar to those found in the Discourses. In the 18th century, the work was even called a satire, for example by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. More recently, commentators such as Leo Strauss and Harvey Mansfield have agreed that The Prince can be read as having a deliberate comical irony. Other interpretations include for example that of Antonio Gramsci, who argued that Machiavelli's audience for this work was not even the ruling class but the common people because the rulers already knew these methods through their education. Topic. Discourses on Livy The Discourses on the First Ten Books of Titus Livy, published in 1531, written 1517, often referred to simply as the Discourses, or Discorsi, is nominally a discussion regarding the classical history of early ancient Rome although it strays very far from this subject matter and also uses contemporary political examples to illustrate points. Machiavelli presents it as a series of lessons on how a republic should be started and structured. It is a larger work than The Prince, and while it more openly explains the advantages of republics, it also contains many similar themes. Commentators disagree about how much the two works agree with each other, frequently referring to leaders of democracies as princes. It includes early versions of the concept of checks and balances and asserts the superiority of a republic over a principality. It became one of the central texts of republicanism, and has often been argued to be a superior work to the prince, from the discourses. 
In fact, when there is combined under the same constitution a prince, a nobility, and the power of the people, then these three powers will watch and keep each other reciprocally in check." Book 1, Chapter 2. Doubtless these means of attaining power are cruel and destructive of all civilized life, and neither Christian, nor even human, and should be avoided by everyone. In fact, the life of a private citizen would be preferable to that of a king at the expense of the ruin of so many human beings." Book 1, Chapter 26. Now, in a well-ordered republic, it should never be necessary to resort to extra-constitutional measures. Book 1, Chapter 34. The governments of the people are better than those of princes. Book 1, Chapter 58. If we compare the faults of a people with those of princes, as well as their respective good qualities, we shall find the people vastly superior in all that is good and glorious." Book 1, Chapter 58. For government consists mainly in so keeping your subjects that they shall be neither able nor disposed to injure you." Book 2, Chapter 23. No prince is ever benefited by making himself hated. Book 3, Chapter 19. Let not princes complain of the faults committed by the people subjected to their authority, for they result entirely from their own negligence or bad example. Book 3, Chapter 29. Other political and historical works Discorso sopra la Cos di Pisa 1499. Del modo di trattare i popoli della Valdiciana Ribellati 1502. Discrezioni del modo tenuto dal duca Valentino Nello Amazar Vitelloso Vitelli, Oliveroto da Ferma, il signor Pagolo e il duca di Gravina Orsini 1502, a description of the methods adopted by the duke Valentino when murdering Vitelloso Vitelli, Oliveroto da Ferma, the signor Pagolo, and the duke di Gravina Orsini Discorso sopra la provision del dinero 1502, a discourse about the provision of money. Ritratti della Cos di Francia 1510, Portrait of the Affairs of France. Ritratto della Cos della Magna 1508-1512, Portrait of the Affairs of Germany. Dell'arte della guerra 1519-1520, The Art of War, High Military Science. Discorso sopra il riformare lo Stato di Firenze 1520, A Discourse about the Reforming of Florence. Samario della Cos della Città di Luca A Summary of the Affairs of the City of Luca. The Life of Castruccio Castracani of Luca Vita di Castruccio Castracani da Luca, a short biography. I Story Florentine 1520 Florentine Histories, an eight-volume history of the city-state Florence, commissioned by Giulio de' Medici, later Pope Clement VII. Fictional works Besides being a statesman and political scientist, Machiavelli also translated classical works, and was a playwright Clizia, Mandragola, a poet Sonetti, Canzoni, Ottavi, Canti Carnascialesci, and a novelist Belfagor Archidiavolo. Some of his other work Decennale Primo 1506, a poem in Terza Rima. Decennale Seconda 1509, a poem. Andrea or the Girl from Andros 1517, a semi-autobiographical comedy, adapted from Terence. Mandragola 1518, The Mandrake, a five-act prose comedy, with a verse prologue. Clizia 1525, a prose comedy. Belfagor Archidiavolo 1515, a novella. Asino d'Oro 1517, The Golden Ass is a Terza Rima poem, a new version of the classic work by Apuleius. Frammenti Storici – Fragments of Stories Other works Della lingua – Italian for «of the language» 1514, a dialogue about Italy's language is normally attributed to Machiavelli. 
Machiavelli's literary executor, Giuliano de Ricci, also reported having seen that Machiavelli, his grandfather, made a comedy in the style of Aristophanes which included living Florentines as characters, and to be titled La Machere. It has been suggested that due to such things as this and his style of writing to his superiors generally, there was very likely some animosity to Machiavelli even before the return of the Medici. Topic. In popular culture Christopher Marlowe's play The Jew of Malta ca. 1589, contains a prologue by a character called Machiavel, a Senecan ghost based on Machiavelli. Machiavel expresses the cynical view that power is amoral, saying, I count religion but a childish toy, and hold there is no sin but ignorance. Niccolò Machiavelli plays a vital role in the young adult book series The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. He is an immortal working in national security for the French government. Niccolò Machiavelli aids Cesare Borgia and protagonist Nicholas Dawson in their dangerous intrigues in Cecilia Holland's 1979 historical novel City of God. David MacLean writes that in the novel, Machiavelli is an off stage presence whose spirit permeates this work of intrigue and betrayal. It is a brilliant introduction to the people and events that gave us the word Machiavellian. Machiavelli appears as an immortal adversary of Duncan MacLeod in Nancy Holder's 1997 Highlander novel The Measure of a Man, and as a character in Michael Scott's novel series The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel 2007 Machiavelli is also one of the main characters in The Enchantress of Florence 2008 by Salman Rushdie, mostly referred to as Niccolò Il Machia, and the central protagonist in the 2012 novel The Malice of Fortune by Michael Ennis. Television dramas centering on the early Renaissance have also made use of Machiavelli to underscore his influence in early modern political philosophy. Machiavelli has been featured as a supporting character in The Tudors 2007 to 2010, Borgia 2011 to 2014, and The Borgias 2011 to 2013. Machiavelli appears in the popular historical video games Assassin's Creed 2 2009 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood 2010, in which he is portrayed as a member of the secret society of assassins. A highly fictionalized version of Machiavelli appears in the BBC children's TV series Leonardo 2011 2012, in which he is Mac, a black streetwise hustler who is best friends with fellow teenagers Leonardo da Vinci, Mona Lisa, and Lorenzo di Medici. In the 2013 episode, Ewings Unite, of the television series Dallas, legendary oil baron J.R. Ewing wills his copy of The Prince to his adopted nephew Christopher Ewing, telling him to use it, because being smart and sneaky is an unbeatable combination. In Da Vinci's Demons 2013-2015, an American historical fantasy drama series that presents a fictional account of Leonardo da Vinci's early life, Eros Vlahos plays a young Niccolo, Nico, Machiavelli, although the character's full name is not revealed until the finale of the second season. The 1967 The Time Tunnel episode, The Death Merchant. Stars famed character actor Malachi Throne as Niccolo Machiavelli, who has been time displaced to the Battle of Gettysburg. The character's personality and behavior seem to portray Cesare Borgia rather than Machiavelli himself, suggesting that the writers may have confused the two. Machiavelli is played by Damien Lewis in the 2013 BBC radio play The Prince written by Jonathan Meyerson. Together with his defense attorney Lucrezia Borgia Helen McCrory, he presents examples from history to the devil to support his political theories and appeal his sentence in hell. The historical novel The City of Man 2009 by author Michael Harrington fully portrays the complex personalities of the two main characters, Girolamo Savonarola and a formative Niccolò Machiavelli, in opposition during the turbulent last decade of 15th century Florence. The portrayal of Machiavelli draws from his later writings and observations of the chaotic events of his youth before rising from obscurity to be appointed as second chancellor of the Florentine Republic at the age of 29, only one month after Savonarola's execution. Major characters include Lorenzo de' Medici, his son Piero, Michelangelo, Sandro Botticelli, Pico della Mirandola, Marsilio Ficino, Pope Alexander VI, Rodrigo Borgia, Cesare Borgia, model for the prince, Piero and Tommaso Soderini, Il Cronaca and the diarist, Luca Linducci. 
The American rapper Tupac Shakur studied Machiavelli while in prison and became greatly influenced by his work. Upon his release from prison, Tupac honored Machiavelli in 1996 by changing his own rap name from Tupac to Machiavelli. In the 1993 crime drama A Bronx Tale, local mob boss Sonny tells his young protege Colagero that while he was doing a 10-year sentence in jail, he passed the time and stayed out of trouble by reading Machiavelli, whom he describes as a famous writer from 500 years ago, and then tells him how Machiavelli's philosophy, including his famous advice about how it is preferable for a leader to be feared rather than loved if he cannot be both, have made him a successful mob boss. Topic see also Florentine military reforms Francesco Guicciardini Francesco Vittori Mayberry Machiavelli Republicanism Italian Renaissance topic References topic Further reading topic Biographies Baron, Hans April 1961. Machiavelli, The Republican Citizen and the Author of The Prince. The English Historical Review. 76 219, 217-253. Retrieved 12 October 2018. Bird, L.A., Florence, 2, Machiavelli in Cambridge Modern History, 1902, Volume 1, ch. v. pp. 190-218 online Google edition Caponi, Niccolo. An Unlikely Prince, The Life and Times of Machiavelli Da Capo Press, 2010, 334 pages Silenza, Christopher S. Machiavelli, A Portrait Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 2015, 240 pages. ISBN 9780674416123 Godman, Peter From Poliziano to Machiavelli, Florentine Humanism in the High Renaissance, Princeton University Press de Grazia, Sebastian Machiavelli in Hell, Highly Favorable Intellectual Biography, won the Pulitzer Prize, excerpt and text search Hale, J. R. Machiavelli and Renaissance Italy 1961, online edition Haliung, Mark. Citizen Machiavelli 1983, Oppenheimer, Paul. Machiavelli, A Life Beyond Ideology 2011, London, New York, Continuum. ISBN 9781847252210 Ridolfi, Roberto. The Life of Niccolo Machiavelli 1963, A Standard Scholarly Biography Chevel, Ferdinand. Six Historians 1956, pp. 61-91 Skinner, Quentin. Machiavelli, in series, Past Masters. Oxford, Eng, Oxford University Press, 1981. pp. v. 102. ISBN 0-19-287516-7 pbk. Skinner, Quentin. Machiavelli, A Very Short Introduction 2000, Online Edition Unger, Miles J. Machiavelli, A Biography Simon & Schuster 2011 A Lively, Authoritative Account of Machiavelli's Life and Work. Villari, Pasquale. The Life and Times of Niccolo Machiavelli, 2 volume 1892, volume 1, volume 2, Veroli, Maurizio, 2000, Niccolo's Smile, A Biography of Machiavelli, Ferrar, Strauss and Giroux excerpt and text search Veroli, Maurizio. Machiavelli, 1998, online edition, Good Place to Start Vivanti, Corrado. Niccolo Machiavelli, An Intellectual Biography Princeton University Press, 2013 261 pages Topic Political thought Anglo, Sydney, Machiavelli, The First Century, Studies in Enthusiasm, Hostility, and Irrelevance, Oxford University Press, 2005, ISBN 0-19-926776-6, ISBN 978-0-19-926776-7 Baron, Hans. The Crisis of the Early Italian Renaissance, Civic Humanism and Republican Liberty in an Age of Classicism and Tyranny 2 volume 1955, Highly Influential, Deep Study of Civic Humanism Republicanism, 700 pp, excerpts and text search, ACLSE Books, also volume 2 in ACLSE Books Baron, Hans. In Search of Florentine Civic Humanism 2 vols. 1988. Baron, Hans 1961, Machiavelli, The Republican Citizen and Author of the Prince, English Historical Review, LXXVI 217-53, doi, 10.1093, EHR, LXXVI, CCXCIX.217, in JSTOR Beerley, Robert 1990, The Counter-Reformation Prince Black, Robert 1999, Machiavelli, Servant of the Florentine Republic, in Bach, Gisela, Skinner, 
Quentin, Veroli, Maurizio, Machiavelli and Republicanism, Cambridge University Press Bach, Gisela, Skinner, Quentin, Veroli, Maurizio, eds. 1993. Machiavelli and Republicanism. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-43589-5. Shabad, Federico 1958. Machiavelli and the Renaissance Online Edition, online from ACLSE Books Connell, William J. 2001, Machiavelli on Growth as an End, in Anthony Grafton and J. H. M. Salmon, eds. Historians and Ideologues, Essays in Honor of Donald R. Kelly, Rochester, University of Rochester Press, 259-277. Leonidas, ed. 2011. Niccolò Machiavelli, History, Power, and Virtue. Rodopi, ISBN 978-90-420-3277-4, EISBN 978-90-420-3278-1 Everdell, William R. Niccolò Machiavelli, The Florentine Commune in the End of Kings, A History of Republics and Republicans. Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 2000. Fisher, Marcus Autumn 1997. Machiavelli's Political Psychology. The Review of Politics. 59 789-829. Retrieved 12 October 2018. Fisher, Marcus 2000, Well-Ordered License, On the Unity of Machiavelli's Thought, Lexington Book Garini, Elena 1999, Machiavelli and the Crisis of the Italian Republics, in Bach, Gisela, Skinner, Quentin, Veroli, Maurizio, Machiavelli and Republicanism, Cambridge University Press Gilbert, Allen 1938, Machiavelli's Prince and Its Forerunners, Duke University Press Gilbert, Felix. Machiavelli and Guicciardini, Politics and History in Sixteenth-Century Italy 2nd ed., 1984 online from ACLSE Books Gilbert, Felix. Machiavelli, The Renaissance of the Art of War, in Edward Mead Earl, ed. The Makers of Modern Strategy 1944 Jensen, de Lamar, ed. Machiavelli, Cynic, Patriot, or Political Scientist, 1960 Essays by Scholars Online Edition Djurjevic, Mark 2014. A Great and Wretched City, Promise and Failure in Machiavelli's Florentine Political Thought. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-72546-1. Kennington, Richard 2004, On Modern Origins, Lexington Books Mansfield, Harvey C. Machiavelli's Political Science. The American Political Science Review, Vol. 75, No. 2 Jun, 1981, pp. 293-305 in JSTOR Mansfield, Harvey 1993, Taming the Prince, The Johns Hopkins University Press Mansfield, Harvey 1995, Machiavelli and the Idea of Progress, in Melzer, Weinberger, Zinman, History and the Idea of Progress, Cornell University Press Mansfield, Harvey C. Machiavelli's Virtue 1996, 171 pp Mansfield, Harvey C. Machiavelli's New Modes and Orders, A Study of the Discourses on Livy 2001 excerpt and text search Roger Masters 1996, Machiavelli, Leonardo and the Science of Power, University of Notre Dame Press, ISBN 978-0-268-01433-9 see also NYT Book Review Roger Masters 1998, Fortune is a River, Leonardo da Vinci and Niccolò Machiavelli's Magnificent Dream to Change the Course of Florentine History, Simon & Schuster, ISBN 978-0-452-28090-8 Also available in Chinese ISBN 9789572026264 Japanese ISBN 9784 597,588, German ISBN 9783471794029, Portuguese ISBN 9788571104004, and Korean ISBN 9788984070059. See also NYT Book Review. Mattingly, Garrett Autumn 1958, Machiavelli's Prince, Political Science or Political Satire, The American Scholar 27, 482-91. 
Nahami, John 1993, Between Friends, Discourses of Power and Desire in the Machiavelli Vittori Letters of 1513–1515, Princeton University Press Nahami, John M. Barron's Machiavelli and Renaissance Republicanism, American Historical Review, 101 1, 119–29, doi, 10.2307, 2169227, JSTOR 2169227. 69227. Peril, A. J. Spring 1991. The Question of Machiavelli's Modernity. The Review of Politics. 53 320-339. Retrieved 12 October 2018. Peril, Anthony 1972, Introduction, Machiavelli's Method and His Interpreters, The Political Calculus, Essays on Machiavelli's Philosophy, Toronto, pp. 3-28 Parsons, William B. 2016, Machiavelli's Gospel, University of Rochester Press, ISBN 9781580465789 Pocock, Ed. 1975, The Machiavellian Moment, Florence Florentine Political Thought and the Atlantic Republican Tradition, Princeton New Ed., 2003, A Highly Influential Study of Discourses and Its Vast Influence, Excerpt and Text Search, also online 1975 edition Pocock, J. G. A. The Machiavellian Moment Revisited, A Study in History and Ideology, Journal of Modern History 1981-53-1, Full text, in J. Store. Rahi, Paul 1992, Republics Ancient and Modern, Classical Republicanism and the American Revolution Online Edition Rahi, Paul A. 2006, Machiavelli's Liberal Republican Legacy, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0521851879 Excerpt, Reviews and Text Search shows Machiavelli's discourses had a major impact on shaping conservative thought. Ruggiero, Guido. Machiavelli in Love, Sex, Self and Society in Renaissance Italy 2007, Schaefer, David 1990, The Political Philosophy of Montaigne, Cornell University Press, Scott, John T., Sullivan, Vicky B. 1994. Patricide and the Plot of the Prince, Cesare Borgia and Machiavelli's Italy. The American Political Science Review. 88 887-900. Doi 10.2307/2082714. ISSN 0003-0554. Retrieved the 12th of October 2018. Skinner, Quentin. The Foundations of Modern Political Thought. V. I. The Renaissance, 1978. Saul, Jacob, 2005. Publishing the Prince: History, Reading, and the Birth of Political Criticism. University of Michigan Press. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Niccolò Machiavelli 2005, online edition Strauss, Leo 1987, Niccolò Machiavelli, in Strauss, Leo, Cropsey, Joseph, History of Political Philosophy 3rd ed., University of Chicago Press Strauss, Leo 1958, Thoughts on Machiavelli, Chicago, University of Chicago Press, ISBN 978-0-226-77702-3 Sullivan, Vicky B., ed., 2000, The Comedy and Tragedy of Machiavelli, Essays on the Literature Literary Works, Yale U Presque 1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List Link, Sullivan, Vicky B. 1996, Machiavelli's Three Romes, Religion, Human Liberty, and Politics Reformed, Northern Illinois University Press Von Vicano, Diego, The Art of Power, Machiavelli, Nietzsche and the Making of Aesthetic Political Theory, Lanham M.D., Lexington, 2007. Thompson, C. Bradley 1995, John Adams's Machiavellian Moment, The Review of Politics, 57 389-417, 10.1017, Also in Rahe 2006. Whalen, Frederick G. 2004, Hume and Machiavelli, Political Realism and Liberal Thought, Lexington Martin White, Four Seminal Thinkers in International Theory, Machiavelli, Grotius, Kant and Mazzini ed. Gabriele White and Brian Porter Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2005 http colon slash slash ute catalog dot oup dot com slash product slash nine seven eight oh one nine nine two seven three six seven six dot do topic Italian studies Barbuto, Marcello, two thousand five, Questa Oblivion della Cos. 
Reflexiones sobre la cosmologia de Machiavello, 1469 Revista Daimon, 34, Universidad de Murcia, pp. 34-52. Barbuto, Marcelo, 2008, Discorsi, I, 12, 12-14. La Chiesa Romana di Front alla Repubblica Cristiana, Filosofia Politica, 1, Il Molino, Bologna, pp. 99-116. Connell, William J. 2015, Machiavelli nel Rinascimento Italiano, Milano, Franco Angeli. Giuseppe Leone, Silone e Machiavelli. Una scuola, dot che non cri principi, pref, di Vittoriano Esposito, Centro Studi Ignazio Silone, Pescina, 2003. Martelli, Mario 2004, La Mandragola e il suo prologo, Interpers, 23, pp. 106-42. Martelli, Mario 2003, Per la definizione della nozione di principe civile, Interpers, 22. Martelli, Mario 2001, I detalli della filologia, Interpers XX, pp. 212-71. Martelli, Mario 1999a, Note su Machiavelli, Interpers 18, pp. 91-145. Martelli, Mario 1999b, Saggio sul Principe, Salerno Editrice, Roma. Martelli, Mario 1999c, Machiavelli e Savonarola, Valutazioni Politica e Valutazioni Religiosa, Girolamo Savonarola. L'uomo e il freight. Adi del XXXV Convegno Storico Internazionale Todi, E14 October 1998, CISAM, Spoleto, pp. 139-53. Martelli, Mario 1998A, Machiavelli e Gli Storici Antici, Osservazioni su alcuni luoghi dei discorsi sopra la prima decca di Tito Livio, Quaderni di Filologia e Critica, 13, Salerno Editrice, Roma. Martelli, Mario 1998b, Machiavelli Politico Amanti Poeta, Interpers 17, pp. 211-56. Martelli, Mario 1998c, Machiavelli e Savonarola, Savonarola. Democrazia, Tyrannide, Profezia, Acura di G.C. Garfognini, Florencia, Sismal Edizioni del Galuzzo, pp. 67-89. Martelli, Mario and Bausi, Francesco 1997, Politica, Storia e Letteratura, Machiavelli e Guicciardini, Storia della Letteratura Italiana, e Mulatto, ed. Vol. 4. Il Primo Cinquecento, Salerno Editrice, Roma, pp. 251-320. Martelli, Mario 1985-1986, Sheed sulla cultura di Machiavelli, Interpers v, pp. 283-330. Martelli, Mario 1982, La logica providenzialistica e il capitolo 26 del principe, Interpers iv, pp. 262-384. Martelli, Mario 1974, Latro Niccolo di Bernardo Machiavelli, Rinascimento, 14, pp. 39-100. Sasso, Gennaro 1993, Machiavelli, Storia del suo pensiero politico, 2 volume, Bologna, Il Molino, Sasso, Gennaro 1987-1997, Machiavelli e gli antici e altri saghi. 4 vols, Milano, R. Ricciardi Topic Editions Topic Collections Gilbert, Alan H. Ed. Machiavelli, The Chief Works and Others, 3 Vol. 1965, The Standard Scholarly Edition Bondanella, Peter, and Mark Musa, eds. The Portable Machiavelli 1979, Penman, Bruce. The Prince and Other Political Writings, 1981. Wooten, David, ed. 1994, Selected Political Writings of Niccolo Machiavelli, Indianapolis, Hackett Pubs, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link, Excerpt and Text Search Topic. The Prince Machiavelli, Niccolo 2016, The Prince with Related Documents 2nd ed., Boston, Bedford, St. Martins, ISBN 978-1-319-04892-1. Translated by William J. Connell Machiavelli, Niccolo 2015, The Prince, U.S., Adagio Press, ISBN 978-0996767705. Edited by W. Garner. Translated by Luigi Ricci. Excerpt and text search 
Machiavelli, Niccolo, 1961, The Prince, London, Penguin, ISBN 978-0-14-044915-0. Translated by George Bull. Machiavelli, Niccolo, 2006, El Principe, The Prince, Commentato por Napoleon Bonaparte, Commentaries by Napoleon Buonaparte, Mestas Ediciones. Translated into Spanish by Marina Massa Carrara. Machiavelli, Niccolo, 1985, The Prince, University of Chicago Press. Translated by Harvey Mansfield. Machiavelli, Niccolo, 1995, The Prince, Everyman. Translated and edited by Stephen J. Milner. Introduction, notes, and other critical apparatus by J. M. Dent. The Prince Ed. by Peter Bondanella 1998-101 pp online edition. The Prince Ed. by Rufus Goodwin and Benjamin Martinez 2003 excerpt and text search The Prince 2007 excerpt and text search Machiavelli, Niccolo. The Prince, 1908 edition TR by W. K. Marriott Gutenberg edition Marriott, W. K. 2008, The Prince, Red and Black Publishers ISBN 978-1-934941-00-3 Il Principe 2006 ed. by Mario Martelli and Nicoletta Marcelli, Edizioni Nazionali della Opere di Niccolo Machiavelli, Salerno Editrice, Roma. The Discourses on Livy Discorsi sopra la prima decca di Tito Livio 2001, ed. by Francesco Bausi, Edizioni Nazionali della Opere di Niccolo Machiavelli, 2 volume Salerno Editrice, Roma. The Discourses, online 1772 edition The Discourses, tr. with introduction and notes by L. J. Walker 2 volume 1950. Machiavelli, Niccolo 1531. The Discourses. Translated by Leslie J. Walker, S.J., revisions by Brian Richardson 2003. London, Penguin Books. ISBN 0-14-044428-9 The Discourses, edited with an introduction by Bernard Crick 1970. Topic. The Art of War The Seven Books on the Art of War Online 1772 edition the Art of War, University of Chicago Press, edited with new translation and commentary by Christopher Lynch 2003. The Art of War Online 1775 edition The Art of War, Niccolo Machiavelli. Da Capo Press edition, 2001, with introduction by Neil Wood. Topic. Florentine histories History of Florence Online 1901 edition Reform of Florence Online 1772 edition Machiavelli, Niccolo 1988, Florentine Histories, Princeton University Press. Translation by Laura F. Banfield and Harvey Mansfield. Topic. Correspondence Epistolario Privato Las cartas que nos desvelan el pensamiento y la personalidad de uno de los intelectuales más importantes del renacimiento, Juan Manuel Forte Edición y Traducción, Madrid, La Esfera de los Libros, 2007, 435 pags, ISBN 978-84-9734-661-0 The Private Correspondence of Niccolo Machiavelli, ed by Orestes Ferrara, 1929 online edition. Machiavelli, Niccolo 1996, Machiavelli and His Friends, Their Personal Correspondence, Northern Illinois University Press. Translated and edited by James B. Atkinson and David Sices. Also see Mahami 1993. Topic. Poetry and comedy Machiavelli, Niccolo 1985, Comedies of Machiavelli, University Press of New England Bilingual Edition of The Woman from Andros, The Mandrake, and Clizia, edited by David Sices and James B. Atkinson. Hogas, Dirk. Niccolo Machiavelli. Dichter Poeta. MIT Samlikan Gedichten, Deutsch, Italienisch. 
Con tutte le posi, Tedesco, Italiano, Rehi, Dialoghi, Dialogues, Literature und Kultur Italiens und Frankreichs, Band 10, Peter Lang Verlag, Frankfurt, M. U. A., 2006, ISBN 3 631 54669 6. External links Machiavelli, Niccolo. Encyclopædia Britannica. 17 11th ed. 1911. pp. 233–237. Machiavelli. Collier's New Encyclopedia. 6. 1921. p. 53. Machiavelli, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy William R. Everdell's article, "'From State to Free State, the Meaning of the Word Republic from Jean Bowden to John Adams' with extensive discussion of Machiavelli Full text books from the Liberty Fund, a conservative think tank Niccolò Machiavelli 1469 The Prince by Niccolò Machiavelli in different formats and languages Site containing the prints, slightly modified for easier reading Works by Niccolò Machiavelli at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Niccolò Machiavelli at Internet Archive Works by Niccolò Machiavelli at LibriVox public domain audiobooks. Machiavelli at the Marxists Internet Archive, including some of his works Works by Niccolò Machiavelli, text, concordances and frequency list Machiavelli on the net, a Machiavelli webliography with a short introduction Works of Machiavelli, Italian and English text Machiavelli and Power Politics Machiavelli on the Online Library of Liberty Digitized Italian Letter, Machiavelli, Carpez Manuscript Library Machiavelli on Diglossa.org Library, Five Parallel Translations, Rue, G. Muraveva and, W. K. Marriott, N. H. Thompson, F. R., J. V. Paris, De, G. Regis Machiavelli and the Italian City on the BBC's In Our Time with Melvin Bragg, with Quentin Skinner, Regius Professor of History at the University of Cambridge, Evelyn Welch, Professor of Renaissance Studies at Queen Mary, University of London, Lisa Jardine, Director of the Centre for Editing Lives and Letters at Queen Mary, University of London University of Adelaide's Full Texts of Machiavelli's Works <laughs>